Tis me again. Okay, I want to continue where I was continuing from. Righteousness by grace. Hallelujah. Went over one of the best verses. And if I get into that verse again, we're going to stay in that verse again for another three weeks. <laughs> Ephesians 1, 6 through 7, I will say quick, to the praise of the glory of his grace, by which, by what? By the glory of his grace, he made us accepted in the beloved. In Jesus Christ, you're not accepted in anything else. You're not accepted in anything else. Ephesians 1, 6 and 7. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood. In him, in him whom? Always find out the past tense, the present tense. What tense is he talking about? Where is he talking? Who is he talking to? Who is he talking about? In him, in Jesus Christ, we have redemption. Past tense have redemption. Already possess redemption. You're not going to be more redeemed later on. You're not going to be more loved by God when you get to heaven. That was for somebody. You think you're working so hard to be accepted by God. You are already. Anybody telling you different. If you are a Christian, you are accepted by God through Jesus Christ and not through anything else. If anybody's telling you any different, beware of their teaching. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption. In him. In Jesus Christ we have redemption through his blood. Not through anything else. It doesn't say through his blood and all that you do. It doesn't say that. Read that. Verse 7. In Jesus Christ. In him it says. In him. In whom? In Jesus Christ. He's the one who shed his blood, right? So look. In him we have redemption through his blood. Who shed his blood? Jesus Christ. In him we have. Are you going to have redemption? To be redeemed means you are ransomed back. The, the payment has been paid 100% for you to be free. To be free and to be God's child. The payment has been paid. Your failures have been paid. You have redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins. What is redemption? The forgiveness of sins. All the things that have kept you from God, kept you from being accepted by God, all these things, the forgiveness of sins, is what redemption is about. That you would be 100% forgiven and made righteous as Jesus Christ is, and accepted in Jesus Christ. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Not according to the riches of your works. I know this is rubbing a few people the wrong way, but people are getting this. People are getting this. When I'm talking about grace, I'm not talking about that everybody in the whole world will be saved. There's a couple teachers teachings out there. They think it's new. It's not new. It's the same old lie from the same old devil saying you don't need God, you don't need Jesus, you don't need the Bible, Paul, you don't need Paul and his revelations. We got everything in ourselves. No, you don't have everything in yourself. And without Jesus, you have nothing. And unless you receive Jesus, you don't have Jesus. That's all New Testament. There is no way to get out of that. You can try as much as you want. But let's just use one scripture where Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to the Father except by me. Then he said in um, Romans 5, 17, For by one man's offense death reigned through the one, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Unless you receive, unless you receive the things Jesus Christ has done, you don't get to partake of the things that Jesus Christ has done. What has Jesus Christ done? Well, his blood has given you redemption. If you believe in what Jesus Christ has done, you get to enter into that redemption. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So I'm not one who believes that you just automatically have this stuff. I believe that you have what you believe for. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for you, you enter into the Lord Jesus Christ and all he's done for you. If you do not believe in that, you cannot come to the Father. 
You cannot have the kingdom of God or see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, you must be born again. Don't let anybody try to steal that from you. That is a lie. It's time to read the Bible and believe it. The righteousness of God does not come by your working, by your trying, by your earning, by your deserving. It doesn't come by your blood, your sweat, or your tears. It doesn't come by your attempts to achieve. It comes by your faith to believe in what Jesus Christ has done for you. It comes through faith, dependence, and reliance upon the Lord Jesus Christ. How was Abraham declared righteous? The Bible says he believed God, believed the promise God gave him, and then righteousness was imputed to his account. It was put to his account. He wasn't saved to extent same extent that we were salvation. Abraham wasn't. Nobody was. Until Jesus Christ died on the cross, rose from the dead, ascended to the Father, sat at the right hand of the Father, sent the Holy Spirit, came back, John 20, verse 20, breathed on him, said, receive the Holy Spirit. Until then, they weren't able to be born again new creations. They couldn't. Jesus Christ had to die and send the Holy Spirit to come he said, the promise of the Father shall come upon you. The promise of the Father is that the Holy Spirit will come and dwell in you and then upon you. Dwell. Abide with you. That's what the anointing is. The anointing is that you are a child of God. That you are put into a position of being a child of God with the Holy Spirit within you. And then the Holy Spirit comes upon you also. Now Abraham was not saved to the extent that we have salvation. We have the indwelling spirit, the presence of God that's with us always. The fact that Abraham was declared righteous before God through his faith was not just for him alone. So we read in Romans uh, 3.21 through 22, which we read earlier, that a man is declared righteous through faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that because of the payment that Christ made on the cross, when he shed his blood for our sin, righteousness or right standing will be imputed to any person's account who simply believes upon Christ. This is stuff that needs to be rehashed. It's not something you just learn it and then that's it. Why? Because this is the fight of faith. The fight of faith is right here. And it's a fight against the very thing that happened in the garden when the devil came to Adam and Eve. He didn't come as a big mountain lion. He didn't come as a gorilla, somebody with enough power to force you down a specific road. He came with words of deception. What they did, Adam and Eve, is they believed the deceiving words. The devil comes to you the same way in your own thinking with deceiving words. We need to know God's word, cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bring into captivity every thought on the obedience of Christ. Romans 5.17 says, For if by one man's offense, that's Adam, death reigned by one, death went through all humanity and it reigned by one, much more, see, how, look how it was raining through all humanity. Much more those who receive, okay? If you don't receive, where are you? You're still in the first Adam. You have two choices. You're in the first Adam or the last Adam. Notice it doesn't call Jesus the second Adam because then we'd have a progression. One, two, three, no. We have the first, one Adam, which is all humanity and where they're, they're at. Then there's the second Adam, okay? Now, much more those who receive the abundance of grace and gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. 
you must receive. For but one by one man's offense, death reigned by one. Much more, that which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. You don't reign in life through any other means or measure. It's by the means and the measurement of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done on the cross for you. What he has supplied for you is how you will reign in this life as well in the life after. This is an eternal thing Jesus Christ has done for you. We're talking about eternal things here. God, God is offering you the gift of righteousness, the gift of right standing before him. Through his own eyes, he will see you this way in right standing. And a gift, though it cost something, but not to the person who receives it, but it did cost God a lot. It cost God his very best. And you can tell a lot by what something costs. You can say, what is the value of that item? Well, it's what somebody's willing to pay. So God valued you so much and humanity so much. He was willing to pay his very best. And he gave his very best, which was his son, Jesus Christ. He valued you that much. And he still does this day. It hasn't changed. Now that you've received Christ, how much more, how much more he loves you and has for you, how much more you are his child. He's not mad and upset at you. He's in love with you. He wants to fellowship with you, to talk to you daily and have you talk to him, to have you hear him and to have him hear you. So a gift does cost something. It costs something to the person giving it, but the person receiving it, it doesn't cost anything. If you give me a gift and ask me to pay for it, it's no longer a gift. But if you give me a gift, and all it is is a real true gift, something you're giving me, it's free to me, even though it costs you everything. God made righteousness available to you and to me as a gift. It's a gift of righteousness. It's a gift of acquittal before God, of right standing before him through faith in Jesus Christ. It's a fantastic place to be in. Till we return. Jesus loves you. Be back soon.